Hello, it's May 5th, 2020. I'm Greg Farrar, and this is my COVID-19 Trends live stream. I will do the countries of the world, the states of the United States, and the counties of California in three sections, starting with the countries. So I'll just dive right in. <clears throat> so total cases, United States as always, dominating everyone else, past a million a while, a while ago. I usually don't focus on total cases though, I am more interested in uh, trends, where things are going, in particular when we get to go outside and kiss Italians again. And Italians actually are in pretty good shape. So um, they are the more safely kissable of the world. Certainly much more than they used to be. Back here, Italy was, was number two. Now it's the United States that everyone should stay away from. Uh, Spain continues to be um, a major, or has, has been a major player, but continues to drop off dramatically. Uh, and so the United States still showing a nice steady downward trend on this graph, which is great. There was some time where it was, I was a little worried. It didn't seem like the United States was really declining. Um, it had peaked. It certainly didn't do the, the hill that others did. If it had done the hill, then the United States by now would be almost at zero. It did not do the hill. But, and I'll show you one, one, of the, one example. The hill is Spain. You can see Spain. Um, Wow, Spain, starting at uh, with as many as 10,000 cases a day. So there was a recent day where they had 500. Most recent day, 1,300, but still, that's more than a 90% decline. So Spain is definitely free to go do their Spanish things. By the way, uh, now that I'm a YouTube sensation, uh, I, I should, should be receiving sponsorship offers, but until then, um, I'm drinking Diet Dr. K. Dr. Pepper, take note. Um, Russia, still very problematic. There's a little bit of a, a, a bump here that suggests maybe they're turning some sort of a corner towards a better place, but uh, Russia is, is by far the number two, and they're rising where the United States is falling. Brazil also, certainly the, the worst in the bunch uh, after the United States and Russia in total cases. And it looks like Peru also is problematic. It's hard to see all the stuff down here. I'm not going to bother zooming in because we can look at it per capita, which spreads things out pretty nicely. If we see the, uh, the graphs per capita, uh, then we see a somewhat different picture. One, for one, the United States is not by any means the leader per capita. It's about to be passed by Ecuador. Ecuador is about to pass the United States per capita. That's that's a surprising statement to me. But Ecuador is doing has been doing quite poorly. The epicenter of the of the infection is um, Central South America, by the way. And it doesn't it, it's the news kind of knows this, um, but it hasn't it doesn't seem to have been quite put together yet. But yes, we have Singapore, we have but but we have Peru, we have Mexico, we have Ecuador, we have Chile. Uh, Central South America is is the new hot spot. Um, that said, there is Singapore. Singapore is um, is also quite a hot spot and the hottest of the hot spots per capita. Uh, it also shows a little bit of a nice downward trend with its latest points, but overall it's still heading upward. So Singapore is is still having problems, uh, but I think uh, if, if the rope chart looks like it has in recent days, and it won't for reasons I'll soon describe, but it'll hopefully look roughly the same. If it looks anything like it has in recent days, Singapore will have this really nice swoop downward on the rope chart, indicating that it is um, it is headed strongly towards recovery and actually is seeing fewer new cases each day. Let's just look at it on, on this chart first to see if, it, if it's apparent here. So Singapore, 25th in the world in cases, not a major contributor anyway. But you can see the, the cluster of recent points. Let's zoom out so we can see all of them. The cluster of recent points is much lower than the cluster of a week or so ago. So Singapore, I would say, visibly trending downward at this point, even though this line hasn't quite noticed. So Singapore, uh, Peru, United States, 
we can see Ireland recovering. The, the other thing that we're going to notice, I'm sure, in the rope chart is the anti-epicenter of the world is Europe. Europe was certainly the epicenter after after China and South Korea and so on got, got over it. But Europe is extremely over this thing at this point in a, in a very dramatic way. And we can see it really clearly in places like Spain, where we've already seen drops all the way down to here. But all the countries of Europe and somehow Turkey also seems to be uh, joining the EU according to this graph. Uh, it has very much the same pattern and roughly the same timing as the other countries of Europe. Uh, and even so do uh, Ireland and uh, the UK to some degree. The UK is not quite recovering. It's sort of flat, but Ireland, as I recall, shows a somewhat better picture. Yeah, much better picture. Ireland there, I'm flashing, uh, is showing again that it is in fact a part of the EU. Not making any political statement there, just showing what the data shows. Let's move on to the rope chart. And there's something different about the rope chart today. So I, the rope chart in past days, every point has been an average of three days. The most recent, the, the, the day and the two days before it, I've averaged them together in an attempt to keep the rope chart from being too wild in how much it fluctuates. But we've seen in the past week that the fluctuations are still pretty wild. Colorado was an extreme example where suddenly it was the worst in the, in the United States and then it was the best in the United States. Uh, as something maybe involving a Greeley meatpacking plant uh, suddenly shot the cases up and then suddenly dropped them again. And so uh, that's one problem. Another problem we've, we've repeatedly seen uh, is, is this sine wave, this wave cyclical pattern that we see throughout the data where cases drop on the weekends and then they surge on the weeks and they drop on the weekends and they surge on the weeks. and that is not probably really happening. I don't think the cases really surge and drop and surge and drop, though it could have something to do with people being inside more on or outside more on the weekends, but everyone's working from home, so I don't know. Um, my guess is it's just an artifact of reporting that they don't report, as some places don't report on, on the weekends at all maybe, and so they get all thrown into the weekday. I don't really know, but the, the trend has been very marked, marked? And people have pointed it out to me, and I've noticed it, uh, and it's very visible on the United on the whole United States graph. Actually, let's see if we can see it. Yeah, you can you can really you can pretty well see it here, up and down, up and down, up and down. That's not quite a one week cycle there, so it gets a little weird right in the middle. But there there are these weekly patterns, and so the problem with that in doing a three day moving average on the rope chart is the rope chart goes up and down because it's only looking at the most three uh, the three most recent days. So I've uh, and I, I've always sort of been trying to defend my my use of a very short three day uh, moving average. Uh, I, I've talked about it quite a bit, um, and I, usually I've said, well, New York does it, uh, which is true at least back in the day a few weeks ago. New York was using a three day moving average, so New York does it. And who am I to argue with New York? Uh, but nevertheless, I decided to change to a seven day moving average. This has the advantage of completely eliminating any weekly cycles. It'll be taking the whole week every time. This whole point now is an entire week of data averaged. The upside of that then is the cycles disappear. It also smooths the data quite a bit. So if there is something with a meat packing plant in Greeley, we will see that surge a little bit, but not as much. And it won't have this real sense that Colorado is suddenly going to hell and now it's all better. And so, um, we have a seven day moving average here. It doesn't radically change this, but I, I do find one thing interesting, which is a couple days ago, I showed you a, a um, graph of, from uh, world, worldometer.info, I think, a graph of the United States. I don't remember quite why I showed it to you because it's the same data I normally show you, but they have it on their own graph. But uh, I, I, looked, I happened to look back at this after deciding to switch to a seven day moving average. Worldometer.info was, was using a three day moving average as, uh, as well. And as of today, I can show you the, the graph. This just happened today. Worldometer's graph of, of the new daily cases is, sh is using a, a seven-day moving average now instead of a three-day moving average. So I think they too are seeing the up and down, up and down, up and down, and saying, this is crazy. We don't need to have our, our moving average wave that much. We're going to seven days. 
seven days also is becoming reasonable because we're, we're, we're weeks into this pandemic. And at the beginning, there was a little bit more of an urgency about what's going to happen tomorrow and the day after and the day after and just this, this immediacy. And now I feel like the news doesn't change as much day to day. Certainly the United States is holding very steady with a slight downward tilt, I hope, in the moving average. Uh, and um, so I think that seven days is becoming justified. For all I know, New York is now using seven days. Maybe I'll watch one of their, one of those Cuomo things again in uh, um, press conferences or whatever and see. But in any case, I've switched to a seven day moving average. So what this will mean is we won't see as much change day to day. We won't see as much extreme upslopes and downslopes, but we will get a better picture of, of, of the longer term trends. So I, I've been emphasizing in the past few days, especially because we've been seeing these crazy uh, swings in Colorado, for instance, that this rope chart is really a very short term um, uh, prediction. Well, it's a little longer term now. We can we can a little more reliably say uh, this this is this might be what we can expect to see for the next week even instead of just the next few days. So with that said, then this change I change this on all my rope charts. With this said, uh, let's take a look at this slightly modified rope chart. Well, the answer is not dramatically different than it's been. Seven days and three days have not made a huge difference. Uh, Chile, as I've mentioned, Central South America is the new epicenter. It's actually, it's the place where things are, are growing, if anything's growing. Um, here's Ecuador, also slightly growing, according to the rope chart. Uh, however, you'll, the, the news here is broadly good. You'll notice that with the exception of Chile, almost no one here is accelerating in their growth rate. Everyone above the zero line is still growing in new cases, and Chile is certainly the worst news of the batch, with a 10% daily growth rate and accelerating pretty fast. And you can see some of their latest points are actually way above the trend line. Uh, so this this is even probably an uh, if if we had a graph that were predicting the, the direction this was going to turn in the future, we would predict that it's going to turn more sharply upwards because. Look at the past five days. Actually, just look. Let's look at Chile. I'm a little surprised, given all those points. Okay, there's one below. That's the one that still has it thinking this is a reasonable trend. But we have a lot of upward upward points here. Again, each one of these is representing the day, in this case May 4th, and the seven days before it averaged. So um, Chile was much noisier, I believe, before. We had points up here and points down there. And this is one thing that switching to the seven-day moving average will do, is it really denoises the signal. So we got, start to get a better picture of the long-term trends. Um, but in the case, regardless, with uh, Chile is still looking bad. 10% growth rate accelerating, even with the um, moderating influence of a change to the seven-day moving average. Um, if we look at these ones here, this little cluster, Brazil, Peru, Pakistan flashed by there, and India. So Pakistan and India also um, are, are, along with Brazil and Peru, they're all in this little cluster here. And what this cluster is doing is it's growing every day, but not at a huge rate, 6 or 7% every day. And, but the growth rate isn't speeding up or slowing down. So it's going to keep being 6 or 7% every day for a while, or if the, if the trend continues, it'll keep that way forever. Now, it won't really keep that way forever. Eventually, this trend has to bend downward, if only when everyone there gets infected. But in, in uh, our historical view of these, we've seen a lot of countries go through something like this. They tend to turn downward in a matter of weeks. Uh, and so we can expect probably that these are these will be turning downward. The good news is they're not accelerating. like. Chile. The only one that I see obviously accelerating other than that is Iran. Iran uh, is actually below zero in its growth rate, so that's good. It's seeing fewer cases each day, but it is accelerating back towards that zero line, and it's right about there right now with a zero growth in the most recent day. We probably have, yeah, in fact, the most recent day was a 3% growth. And so if this trend continues, and this trend again with a seven-day moving average is a little more stable than our, the trends we've seen, uh, so far, 
if this trend continues, Iran is turning in the, in the wrong direction around the corner, uh, is turning back towards positive growth where it was weeks ago. So Iran is the other bad news. Everyone else, everyone else is good, is pretty good news. There are still a few countries, quite a few really, above zero uh, in growth that are continuing to grow. Saudi Arabia seems to be turning the corner right now and it will presumably then not grow much more day over day. Um, yeah, I can't find its, its latest data point, but no matter, uh, Saudi Arabia is, is looking good in that it's trending downwards. And, but then you have all these countries which are not only trending downwards, their, their lines are at least slightly angled downward, but they are below zero, which is great. It means they're shrinking in daily cases and they are accelerating in the, the rate at which they're shrinking. So this cluster here is Europe. Portugal, Netherlands, the anti-epicenter, Belgium, Spain, Ireland, Switzerland, Singapore. Interestingly, Singapore is, a, is the real exception here, which is um, it, it is the sharpest downward of all of them. It is also very negative in its growth right now. Uh, it, Singapore has gotten over this thing uh, in, a, in a big way and is speeding towards recovery. Uh, these, have, these are much longer, much farther along their path towards recovery, so they actually don't have much opportunity to shrink rapidly anymore the way that shrink Singapore can. This is more something you see in the first few weeks of recovery, but these are probably a month or two into the recovery now. Um, France, Switzerland, Turkey, again, interestingly, uh, is considering itself to be part of Europe. Italy, Germany. This whole cluster is just Europe plus Turkey and Singapore. Uh, the United States... <clears throat> is doing that thing. It's doing that thing that the United States does. The United States is just hovering at zero. And the last two data points, which again are averages of an entire week, the entire week, the, the entire week is zero, negative 0.0015% down. So yes, it's down. Uh, yes, it's shrinking, but it's shrinking very, very slowly right now. And if you look, it's just lived on that very barely below zero thing for weeks now. So the United States uh, is just on the, it's, it's balanced between recovery and uh, new growth. It's not shrinking. It, we are seeing the same new cases, same number of new cases every day, roughly, over quite a long time. Uh, it's not getting better. But it's not at least Chile shooting up into the air. And Chile here and Singapore, by the way, are both small, uh, they're at the bottom of our list, they don't have that many cases, so they do tend to be a little more exuberant in the angles of their graphs because you can have uh, a small a small number of cases, relatively small number of cases can be a large percentage of their cases. All right, worldwide, the world is doing as the United States does. As you'd expect, if you look at the total, total graph again, the United States is surely, is, is obviously the major contributor to cases. And so the world goes as the United States goes to some degree. And this graph looks, uh, in new cases, looks a bit like the United States, but the United States is trending downward slightly, so other countries are, are picking up the slack there. Uh, and the world's, um, yeah, the, for a long time, this the seven-day moving average really makes this even more boring than it used to be. The world's trend is extremely flat. The, at the trend line at most got up to 2% with that seven day moving average. And right now it's just at zero. So the world also is, is hovering between uh, recovery and, um, and a new epidemic. And it's certain places shrink and other ones come, come online. And so if India and Pakistan really do uh, show what they're, what they're showing, which is bad news, relatively bad news, and then they'll be the new epicenter after Central South America, probably, because they haven't quite caught them yet. Uh, and we'll, we'll just keep seeing the world steady as the United States recovers and India um, has its new problems. Um, deaths I don't usually look much at um, because the, the graphs look similar to the overall graphs, but I'll take a look at them right now. Um, in terms of deaths, we have the bifurcation of the of the chart again, and uh, um, 
there are a lot of countries that are doing well. Uh, we have you know, Europe, as always, is doing well in, its, in the drop of the death rates. The United States also, however, is doing very well in the drop of death rates. Uh, better, better in deaths than it does in uh, cases. Now, there is a mini trend upward, so we'll see if that persists. But again, we're looking at the seven-day moving average now rather than the three-day moving average, and it doesn't seem to be making a huge change. But there are a bunch of countries. Uh, most, the worst is India in death rates, and then this is probably Singapore. Yeah, Singapore's death rate is shooting upwards. Uh, it will, I guess, it's interesting that its death rate is, uh, or the, not just the death rate, but the growth of deaths is shooting upwards even while Singapore is, is seeing a, a sharp, sharp downward uh, reduction in new cases. That's more like what I always would have expected to see, which is you get the cases and two weeks later you get the deaths. And so the deaths could very well be tracking this part of the line over here uh, from weeks ago. But usually what we see is not that. We see that the deaths fairly closely um, mirror the cases and with the other countries that seems about like what we're seeing but Singapore has a very interesting reversal of that where its death rate is or the growth in the death rate is, is rising let's just look at the deaths per million at, uh, in different countries uh, just to take a look especially at what Singapore is doing oh and I wanted to look at Sweden too Singapore deaths per million it's going to be pretty s no actually I don't know if it's going to be small because it's per capita. Yeah, Singapore, even per capita, the deaths are minuscule. Okay, so that's that's why we don't care about this line. This there are just too too few data points. This line is doing wild things and doesn't it's the 25th country out of 25 and it has very few deaths anyway. So this line can't really be trusted to give us any kind of useful information. The the top line, the top 10 are, are more uh, reliable. The bottom ones can sometimes help us see upcoming epidemics, but until they move Farther up the, the list, it, it it's not it's just not reliable with such with so few cases, so few deaths. Looking at Sweden briefly, so Sweden is of course the the um, bad boy of the world when it comes to lockdowns and such. Uh, Sweden is just hasn't been locking down. There is some story recently on one of the major news outlets about somebody who went to, some reporter who went to Sweden who was saying this seems very dangerous what's happening here and that that's kind of the world's the world is watching Sweden wide-eyed and saying what do you think you're doing and Sweden on the other hand is looking at the world wide-eyed and said what do you think you're doing you're the ones who are doing this right here well and so we watch Sweden with great interest Sweden is in Europe and you notice they're lagging Europe pretty far Europe has recovered uh, but on the other hand Sweden has a week ago, turned the corner towards negative growth, apparently. Uh, Sweden is seeing fewer and fewer new cases. So Sweden isn't doing that badly, but they probably aren't doing as well as Europe. And this, I think, is what we would expect. My, What I would expect, anyway, uh, is that if if a country or a state, say, does not, or if it releases its lockdown before everyone else, <clears throat> or uh, we can expect that it will have more cases than everyone else, and it will have more deaths than everyone else. And there are benefits to releasing the lockdown early as well. And so it, it's up for, it, it's for each uh, country and state to make that determination on its own. But Sweden made the determination and it chose to be higher up here, to have more cases, I would say. Um, maybe, maybe Sweden didn't even think there were, there were going to be more cases. It thought that the whole lockdown thing was madness, as some people do. But uh, I, I think this supports the more moderate position that if you don't lock down, you will have more cases, more people will die. And that, that's not, I'm not taking a position on whether that means you should lock down. It's just a, a balancing act that everyone has to decide and the governments have to decide on their own. But Sweden here is, is showing the uh, impact, probably the impact, of not locking down with the rest of Europe by having by having barely turned the corner where the rest of Europe just a few days ago where the rest of Europe turned the corner weeks ago and so I think let's see what per capita Sweden is looking like new cases right now per million actually let's just look at Europe let's imagine for the moment and Norway isn't even here so that's in Denmark they're not even on the top um, or Finland I guess 
they're just not in the top 25. So that by itself, the, the mere fact that Sweden is even here, indicates something interesting, uh, where the rest of Scandinavia was much more earnest in their lockdown. But if we look at some of Europe, some of the major countries of Europe, I'm not trying to find them all, but we see there's a pattern. Um, Italy, of course, was worse hit than anyone, and so its peak is actually back before the graph even really started. But Belgium and Spain had the sharp peak, sharp decline. Germany, less of a peak, but a fairly sharp decline. And this is per capita. In Europe now, Sweden is the worst per capita. It's, it is uh, pulled ahead of everyone per capita. Not the worst that any of them have been, Spain peaked much higher than Sweden is, uh, but they Sweden's taking this very long, slow uh, curve towards recovery, probably heading towards recovery. The rope chart thinks so, but it's they're taking their time in, in recovering. And this is what I would say, a, my perspective, I would like to think a balanced perspective on lockdowns, says we would expect what we're seeing here, that Sweden is not recovering as fast uh, and they, they have more cases per capita, but then they never shot off into the infinity either. They're taking a, a measured approach to lockdowns and doing some things, locking down colleges and certain restrictions on businesses, uh, but not, not the extreme view. And so they don't have the extreme recovery. They don't have the extreme lockdown. Therefore, they don't have the extreme recovery. That's what I think we're seeing here. And just out of curiosity, how are deaths per capita in Sweden versus the rest of Europe? Um, that's the rope chart. I'm looking more for this. Spain, Italy, you can see these sharp declines. Germany, not so sharp in Germany's decline yet. Not visibly, and we'll just pick out Sweden. Yeah, and there's Sweden growing in deaths, more deaths per capita than anyone at this point. Uh, probably flattening off. It looks like they'll never be as bad as Spain was or Italy, um, but they are slower. They're recovering more slowly, which is kind of what you'd expect or what I would expect. Others would expect differently. I get some wild Twitter messages about how, how ridiculous the whole idea of locking down is, and I just sort of nod at them and say, that's a good theory, and it'll make some predictions. And uh, this, this, what we're seeing here is is not in line with the predictions that the more uh, extreme Twitter theorists make. Because if, if, if lockdowns really didn't do anything, uh, well, I mean, we, we'll, we'll find out later. I, as I always say, if the more data will come in, we'll get a better analysis. But preliminary um, napkin analysis suggests that lockdown helped. They've helped here, they've helped here, they've probably even helped here. Germany, it's not clear, not quite so clear at this scale because they were small to begin with. But when you when you blow it up to the, the full scale, it really does have a decline. And though Germany had it worse than some, the lockdowns seem to have helped. I'm going out on the limb here and say lockdowns do something. Okay, um, looking at testing, total to, uh, population tested in the top 25, when we look at the top uh, and we look at all of them, we get completely different winners. As I often talk about Iceland with its spectacular 16% tested, Bahrain, Luxembourg. There are a few small countries that are doing really, really high percentage testing. Not just numbers, but percentage. So the size is being compensated for there. It's not just because they're small, uh, but it is, is, when you take all the countries, there will be a few outliers and those are the ones. But now Portugal is doing really well. Actually, who's this? Ireland? Ireland had, they may have finally cleared a backlog. This looks like, a, no, that's UK. Ireland, maybe we just started. We'll look at Ireland in a minute. Portugal's doing great. Um, Ireland has tested 4% of their population. No, I have to look at this now. This is way too interesting. Okay, Ireland, uh, I remember. Ireland seems to report its numbers weekly. And so we don't get a trend line because there are so many zeros, the trend line just decides that zero is the trend line. But we can see, obviously, Ireland is just having an upward upward swing here. And they are number two, clearly number two in the in the top 25 of the world, number two in the big 
uh, players. Uh, Italy, Switzerland, Belgium, Russia, um, Canada, United States. So there's the United States testing pretty well at 2.3% of its population tested so far. Let's see how they're doing in their... Um, you know, that, I don't have that. I keep wanting to add that. Uh, the, the ones that are accelerating versus the ones that aren't. We can tell from when the dots are above the trend line roughly. Russia is accelerating. Canada is accelerating. The United States is accelerating, it looks like, slightly. Um, United Kingdom's doing well. Yeah, so a lot of countries doing pretty well in their testing in the top 25. There are a few that aren't, it seems. Pakistan, Ecuador. Ecuador kind of needs to. But they are, they are picking it up. Ecuador is accelerating. Actually, I wonder if we have more data from Ecuador. Ecuador, as you may recall, is one of our pro problem spots. Now we just have missing data is all. But if this is true, they've suddenly massively spiked their rate of testing. Uh, and if so, then good, because they were accelerating already, but they just, they, they're still at the very bottom. They're testing three tenths of, a, they've tested three tenths of a percent of the population, and that's just not enough. Uh, four tenths is sometimes the number I've used as the absolute minimum. Eight tenths is pretty good, but a lot of countries are doing in the, in the, in the single digit percentages, three, two, even one percent is adequate uh, so Ecuador is not is not doing well enough yet let's look at some of the other um, problem spots in uh, which we don't have data for Brazil at all or we have a very little old data hopefully that's not real we've tested more than six hundredths of a percent Chile is doing okay and they're accelerating um, they've they've done 1.2 percent of the population is not great but it's okay Mexico if that's real, Mexico is doing terribly at seven tenths of a percent of their population total tested. Uh, what was the other one? Ecuador. We've looked at already. All right, I'm going to move on to the states. States of the United States. Here again, I've. All right, well, let's look at New York. Interestingly, New York is uh, is um, well, it's not. This is good. This is great. When the dots are below the line for the total, that suggests that it's, it's decelerating. And this is really decelerating. You can see those dots breaking away on New York and to some degree on New Jersey as well. New York must be doing very well indeed to have that kind of a, um, uh, of a break from its, its long-term trend line. Uh, if we look at the, um, at the daily cases, as you can see why New York is it's on the verge of, of no longer being the leader in new daily cases. Uh, very likely Illinois is going to pass it, as we saw yesterday. It's, it even might be passed by New Jersey or Massachusetts or California, which are not trending downward so much right now. So New York has just won this thing, uh, as far as I can tell. Uh, 3,000 new cases a day versus 10,000. I mean, it has, it has time to go. People shouldn't be running outside and doing things that they're not supposed to do, as we saw in the last uh, slides. It, there is evidence that lockdowns really do work. I, I don't believe New York has lifted its lockdown, though they seem to be starting to do certain little things. And there, I think there was something on uh, May 1st from Governor Cuomo that said we were talking days until we lift the lockdown. And I assume they're, in that case they're talking the social in-your-house lockdown. Um, that's, that's what they lifted in Cal Colorado recently. And that's, I think, the lockdown that people hate the most is not being able to go out and meet their friends, or I don't know, different people hate different things. Not being able to go to work or not being able to have business opens, businesses open is, is worse for some. But New York is on a very, very good trend. And New Jersey also doing quite well. Always was the second place. No longer. New Jersey has been passed by Illinois. We're going to look at, eh, let me just zoom in a little bit so we can get a quick sense of I'm going to take New York out of the picture so we can get a better scale. So New Jersey, Illinois is past New Jersey. New Jersey's uh, recovering very nicely. Massachusetts and California are, are heading horizontally. So they aren't, they're, they're, they've reached some sort of a plateau in new cases, but they're not seeing a rapid drop yet. So I think we'll see in the rope chart that we can expect that. Pennsylvania heading downward, uh, looking pretty good. A few others looking good, Michigan and Georgia. 
uh, and then quite a lot that are not looking so good. Um, Texas, Maryland, Virginia, but really the rope chart is what will tell us more about the, where these are headed. Again, this is a seven day average rope chart now, changed just today from a three day average. So this, this is a more, a less noisy, more reliable, but much slower changing trend line that we're seeing here. These are, this is not the rope chart. These are the daily cases per, um, per million. Um, and per million, New York has long since been passed by the likes of Illinois. Illinois still looking like a real problem spot. Iowa, sure, uh, also looking problematic. Let's look, at, uh, let's look at the rope chart. So on the rope chart, we see, and again, seven day average, Wisconsin is, is, our, is our worst. Arizona and, and, um, and Virginia also not looking good. Now that we've switched to the seven day, we're bringing in some of those really bad days from four or five days ago in Colorado, and Colorado is again looking bad. Uh, although, as I recall, Colorado has such weird data to it. Let me look at Colorado's data and see if I, if I believe what it's saying. Colorado, I, I believe, had some missing data that, that just made some of the, and it does seem to be slightly sloped upwards. Um, it had this great reduction that Colorado, it had, the data did eventually come in here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right. So we now have exactly seven data points after that very strange week-long anomaly. If we were to look at these seven data points, it's hard to say what direction Colorado's going. Uh, straight out to the right, sure. Uh, so this this isn't too bad as a guess, but we'll we'll watch Colorado as we continue. It's, it'd be really nice if we had good data for Colorado because they are sort of the Sweden of the United States in the way they opened up before most people thought that it was reasonable to do so. Georgia, being another one that was a little early to open, uh, is hugging the line here, one percent. Um, it is dropping each day, I guess, but not by much, and it's sort of going horizontally. The rope chart as a, as a whole, though, is sort of going horizontally, so Georgia isn't in, in too bad company here. It's really in the bottom of the pack, or, or I guess the best of the pack. Uh, we have this split bifurcation of, uh, of the two branches here, where there are the, the ones that are, that are growing and the ones that are shrinking. Um, it doesn't look very good overall because a lot of the ones that are growing are accelerating. They have this upward slope by state. And some of the ones that are shrinking are holding steady but not dropping quickly. Still, the good news is in New York, in New Jersey, which have really shown a lot of good trend. Rhode Island also had a peak but is doing extraordinary testing. Uh, Indiana is okay, but is trending upwards uh, in its growth. So it's, it's still shrinking in total cases, but that amount that it shrinks by is dropping. So it, it could become a problem. Worst is Wisconsin, Virginia, uh, Arizona. We talked about Colorado already. Uh, Illinois, that's an interesting one, because Illinois has been a pretty big problem. It's looked like it might be an upcoming problem. Right now, Illinois is looking not too bad. 3-4% growth isn't terrible, though it adds up, but at least it's flat in its trend. It's, it is not getting worse. Um, where is Michigan here? And yeah, here, by the way, is Missouri, which is trending upwards in its growth. It's a real mixed bag here in the, in, in the states. We have a lot of good news and we have a lot of bad news. And, uh, nothing is, when we start looking at the seven day trends, nothing is much outside of the 5% to negative 5% range. Um, the broad trend, it's really hard to say. You, you could say that there is a V here and the whole thing sweeping upward, but this whole cluster going downward is pretty strong too. So I'm just going to say there are two trends. There are the states that, have, that are, seem to be recovering, uh, and then there's a gap. And then the, the ones that really are, are not recovering. And, and again, with the, the general trend seems to be that states that are recovering are speeding up in their recovery, and states that are not recovering are getting even worse. So there, there's still a lot of, uh, I, I still have plenty of concern about what I'm seeing on this graph. Here's Louisiana, which did so well for so long. Suddenly, now Louisiana is back up and growing across the zero line. Mixed bag. Mixed bag. Ohio, which, which had its had a real problem, 
and then seem to recover. Now that we're looking at it from a seven-day perspective, the recovery even isn't so uh, so obvious, but it probably will be because the, the that incident was seven or so days ago, and so the, the latest, latest data points still show that prison outbreak. We'll we just keep watching. I don't know what to say about the United States. Some of, some of them looking good, some not. California, eh. Colorado, eh. But we do have at least the, the biggest states, the ones with the most cases, New York and New Jersey, are dropping and are accelerating. Okay, I'm going to just very quickly look over this because I'm behind on my schedule. Uh, Rhode Island continues to, to stun with its 7% uh, population tested. New York, um, Massachusetts doing great. No one's doing terribly here. Right? When we looked at the countries, there were some that had tested apparently 700th of their population. Everyone in the United States, every state has tested at least 1% of the population. That's good. And what's even better maybe is that the trend lines, uh, the amount, a number being tested per day appear to all be headed upwards. Not all, but mostly. We're, we're accelerating in our testing. So the United States looking pretty good. I'll briefly look at California. California um, is accelerating in its testing pretty markedly, accelerating in its testing, and it's um, it's still in the in the bottom of the pack in, in total tested, but the bottom of the pack is now two percent tested, which is not a bad number. So the testing is going pretty well nationwide. Let's move to the uh, counties. In the counties, we have Los Angeles leading. Riverside, San Diego, um, Orange uh, have, have uh, more cases total than the rest. But let's look at the new daily cases. Actually, let's just switch, go to the new daily cases per capita. Um, the problem spots, there are a few. We, have, we see quite a few uh, counties that look like they're trending downward here in new cases. But not obviously San Diego, Tulare, Los Angeles, or Imperial. Imperial, we see, though it's a small county, it keeps climbing in our, in our rankings. It used to be 25th. It was off the list entirely. So Imperial still does have some sort of a problem. Even compensating for, with this has now got a, um, is this, no, this, these are the new daily cases. Um, but the trend, uh, if we look at Imperial, the trend line, well, we have a couple of zero days, so. Imperial just sometimes doesn't report, and that's hard. It's it's hard. Uh, small county, maybe this maybe the data isn't super reliable because it fluctuates a lot, but still, it, it stays up there and it keeps moving up in the rankings. And I think that means that Imperial uh, is is actually a problem. Two layer. Best recovery is at Riverside that I'm seeing here. Pretty good recovery in San Francisco. Let's move to the rope chart. The trends of growth. This again is a seven day moving average. And we see a real fraying of this rope chart. You would actually kind of expect that a seven day moving average might, might unfray the rope. The, the extreme, more extreme data points would get averaged and uh, individual outliers wouldn't have as much of a pull. But we are seeing a fraying of the rope chart. Overall, I'd say this is generally good news for California, maybe very slightly. Uh, it's, it's the, the rope is centered somewhere around the zero line, but is it trending upwards? Maybe, maybe it's mixed. Um, but we do see, I'd say more counties are shrinking than are rising, or maybe it's, maybe it's, in, maybe it's even. Um, but the news for California counties is middle to mixed, let's say, uh, middle to mixed, middle to, it's middle. It's middle. Uh, Tulare is has the highest growth rate right now. Tulare is in the middle of our, our pack, so it's, that's a, probably a, and we're doing seven day again now, so that's probably significant. Tulare probably really does have a problem with growth. Uh, growth is succeeding others, um, and, and trending upwards, accelerating growth, positive more than ten percent a day, and accelerating. That's a problem. Orange County similarly. 8% uh, a day uh, new cases of growth and accelerating upwards. San Luis Obispo uh, has 5% a day and accelerating upwards. On the other side, though, we've got YOLO, which is very small and can be expected because it's small to possibly be an outlier, so I wouldn't take this with 
too much, uh, I wouldn't believe it too much, but Yolo at this point is looking great. San Joaquin is looking very good. Um, also in the middle of our pack, so not, not super tiny in number of cases. 10% drop in daily cases. San Joaquin and accelerating downward in a very good, very good way. Riverside looking pretty good. 8%, 7% um, drop in new, new cases each day and heading downward. And then there's the rest. Uh, maybe worth noting that San, Santa Cruz has long since dropped off our analysis because it's, it's doing so well. We don't really know. It could be experiencing epidemic growth right now. I don't have the numbers. But if it were, it would very quickly displace YOLO. So uh, probably Santa Cruz has got it well under control. I know there are some listeners from Santa Cruz. That's about it. Uh, the testing by county. San Francisco is doing great, accelerating upwards. San Francisco, 2.7% of the population tested, and you can see it's, it's sped up recently. Riverside is not accelerating upwards, but it still has a pretty good number. San Mateo and uh, San Diego doing well with their testing. So that's the news. Uh, the counties of California mixed. I'd like to say that the news is a little good there, just eyeballing it, but you could totally look at it and say it's sweeping upwards as a whole. I don't know. Mixed. Uh, states also mixed. We got some good ones, we got some bad ones, and they're about as many good ones as bad ones. Maybe more bad ones than good ones uh, if I just roughly eyeball it. So the, the news for by state is mixed. Um, but the, the news for the world is pretty good. Pretty good. It's been better. There were times when we saw everything headed downward. And actually almost everything's headed downward here. There are just a couple, two or three that aren't. But there are a lot that are above zero, which I, I, I seem to recall that a couple weeks ago, the trend for the world was every single country was headed downward and almost all of them were below zero in growth. There's just a few above. And if that's if my memory serves correctly, that is, that is no longer the case. That is that is certainly not what we're seeing here. So the world also looks kind of mixed, but it looks mixed in a better way. We have a lot of downward trends for the, the uh, the growth rates, but we still have a lot of positive growth rates. Uh, down, downward trend, though, means that given time, all these countries, all the ones that are angled downward, will go below zero. There's a cluster here that's just hanging out at 5%, and then there's Chile, which is by far the worst uh, and certainly has, has a problem. But uh, if and general, generally, so goes uh, Central South America. So we'll keep an eye on those. I probably won't do one tomorrow. I might, um, but I often have to skip Thursdays. And we'll see if, if the world or the states or the counties are looking any better. Right now, news is mixed. Um, I'm Greg Farrar. Thanks for watching.